and welcome, welcome back to Ensuring Success Day 2. This is our eighth year of doing Ensuring Success. We hope you've been here all eight years. We hope you've been here all day yesterday and we'll be here all day today. We have seven great hours of continuing education available to you today and looking forward to sharing it with you and with all of our expert speakers. Before we do that, before we move forward, I want to just share a list of our sponsors for this event because we would not be here if it weren't for our sponsors who are making this event possible. So the sponsors for Ensuring Success 2021 include ADP, Ace Cloud Hosting, CPA Charge, Avalara, Botkeeper, ComplyRight, Corpay One, CoreV, CPA.com, eFile for Biz, Intuit, QX Global Group, Right Networks, SafeSend Returns, Sage, SureLink, TaxFile, Vic AI, Walters Kluwer, and Zero. So thank you to all of our sponsors who are making the event possible today. And part of what they're doing is making it possible for us to offer CPE credit to all of our attendees. So if you are here to get CPE credit, here's how it works. You will get a, a three-digit code three times during each session. So nine digits all together. We'll present each three-digit code at some random point during the session. So your job is to write down that code or take a screenshot or record it somehow. Write down each of the three-digit codes. At the end of the day or whenever you're ready to collect your CPE credit, you'll go back to insuringsuccess.com, click the Get CPE option at the top of the screen, and it'll open up to another screen where you enter the email address that you used to register for this event, and then you'll enter the three-digit codes for every session you attended, and you can download your CPE certificates right there. If you have any questions about how CPE works, or any technical questions, or any questions for our speakers during our sessions, if you scroll down on your screen right below the video display, there's a button you can click that says Ask a Question, and you can enter your question in there, and we'll be receiving those questions live throughout the day. Um, I want to specifically thank our sponsor for this individual session, which is CorePay One. So thank you to CorePay One. We're here because of you. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce our speakers for this session, which is a session on automating accounts payable in a post-COVID world. So right now, our speakers for this session include Sean Duncan, Bob Lewis, Jeannie Whitehouse, and Alexander DeFelice. And I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves to you briefly. So Sean? So good morning. My name is Sean Duncan. I have a firm here in Dallas. And actually, I've made the pivot from compliance to full advisory. And that evolved into actually a full family office. So now we not only provide business and tax consulting, but we also provide law, wealth management, and insurance. So we're a comprehensive solution for clients. Hi, I'm Bob Lewis, SVP of accountant, the accountant channel at CorePay One. Thank you all for uh, allowing us to sponsor. It's a pleasure to support this great event. And so thank you that, um, for that. CorePay One, we offer SMB spend management solutions. So in this context, AP automation, bill pay, expense reimbursement, corporate card. And uh, we automate all those payments to simplify the process for small businesses and the accounting community. Excellent. Jamie? I'm Jeannie Whitehouse. I'm a CPA working with Broke Markle Davison Company, a firm focused on wineries in the Napa Valley. And I am Alexandra DeFelice, Director of Marketing and Business Development for Pain and Fears Law Firm in Southern California, and your co-moderator with Gail Perry for this day and yesterday. All right. Thanks, everybody. And so glad you're here with us and so glad our audience is here with us today. If you were here yesterday, you may have attended one of our sessions on um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And one of the comments that came out of that session was that if you're looking for ways to automate your practice, become more efficient, or help your clients do that, one of the first places you should think about starting is the field of accounts payable processing. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today in more depth. Um, we want to know a little bit more about what 
what is entailed in the concept of accounts payable processing and then how can you make it better? So let's talk a little bit first about what do we mean when we say accounts payable processing? Sean, I'm going to start with you because you're right next to me. <laughs> I got volunteered or voluntold like at home. Um, so <laughs> accounts payable processing, I mean, every, it's any time somebody needs to get paid. I mean, that's as simple as it really gets, right? How do you go about paying vendors. Now, whether you're the CPA providing that service on behalf of your clients or you're the client yourself and you have choices to make on how that how you do that. Do I want to unfold a million receipts and then type them into something and, and write manual checks or do I want to be more efficient with it? And so that's what we'll be talking about today is a lot about it, the different tools, the options, the trends and um, how you can do this better either for your clients or at least rec make recommendations <coughs> to your clients. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when we talk about dealing with accounts payable on a more automated basis, and I think we also refer to that sometimes as spend management. Mm -hmm. um, where do we start? If, if you're in the position of doing paper receipts, and I used to have to tape my paper receipts to a piece of paper and then scan <laughs> them and then send them to my company for reimbursement, um, how, what's the next step to moving towards a more efficient process? Mm. Where do you guys go? Sure. So, well, I think, uh, yeah, so, so you know, AP automation broadly is starting with document and data capture, and then there's approval process, and then moving the money, you know, paying the, reimbursing the employee, paying the vendor. So uh, really the first step in, uh, in automating is, is, is looking at a solution to, to work on a piece of one of those, or maybe a solution that does all, all of that in one. And, uh, and then, you know, you mentioned, Gail, spend management. So it, it used to be just point solutions like AP. We had AP, we had expense reimbursement solutions that are separate, and then there might be payments done another way. Send a file to the bank to do an ACH. Maybe you've outsourced some check printing or you're, you're doing check runs. So uh, even, the early wave of automating pieces of those is, uh, is really changing. So we're starting to bring it all together. Well, and I love that you're compartmentalizing it. It's not just, you don't have to come in and go, oh, I've got to solve the whole thing, right? It can be overwhelming to try to tackle that entire monster. It's anywhere you're experiencing pain, can I make this better? And honestly, this is true about every part of your practice or every part of your client's business is how do we see a pain, inefficiency, and just tackle that phase? And so if it's really just making sure the money moves and that would save you time and money or save your clients time and money or make them better, just focus on that. You don't have to go with this overarching solution. Do they all exist? Do solutions exist? Of course. But it's sometimes just too overwhelming to try to tackle the entire beast at one time. So take it in chunks. But I love that compartmentalization. It's these phases. Which phase can you create the most value with? Mm. You know, and one thing we talked about when we were planning this session, um, Jeannie was sharing some stories with us about her relationship with her clients and how, uh, how accounts payable is sometimes the inefficiencies of accounts payable sometimes really hold back the job you're trying to do for your clients. Do you well, want to elaborate on that a little right. bit? Well, it holds back the owner's insights as well. So one of the things, and, and this topic included a post-COVID world, and I think we've had the best opportunity, thanks to COVID, to start having different conversations with clients, and I know we're seeing that, um, because we ask a client, how are your operational system supporting what you were trying to do during COVID. And I think we saw a bunch of fails as a result of people having to go to the office to pick up manual checks and all of those things. And so they're actually coming to us now for advice on how to make these systems better. And so this is a door opener for anybody who wants to get into advisory service to start saying, let's start with something um, critical to your business, but you may not be focusing on it, accounts payable. And from there, by asking conversations about your systems and other ways to do things and, and investigating with that client what's going on today, you can position yourself differently in their eyes. And also, you know, we're a vendor for these clients, right? I mean, we're getting a check. If we're getting a manual check from one of our clients, then get that check and go, you know, I had to send a person, a <laughs> I had to send a person down there to get your damn check so I could get your payment. So let's talk about a better way. Let's get some automation in place to make your life better and to make my life better and all of your other vendors as well. So it's really an opportunity for us to step up and do what we should be doing anyway, which is helping those clients move forward. Okay, so this is time for our first fun polling question, okay? <laughs> because, you know, basically, you know, your clients are having to 
pay their vendors, but your clients also need to pay you. Yes. So I, so do we know how our clients are paying us in this COVID world? And you know, if, if you're not in the office, how are you getting the check? So we have our first polling question. It should be on the bottom of your screen. If you don't see it, hit refresh. You just need to enter your name once through the day, and then you can shoot. You should see all the polls throughout the day. So the question is, how are most of your clients paying you? Uh, are they paying you by credit card? Are they putting a check in the mail? Is it electronically or ACH? Or I just wish they would pay me. So <laughs> we'll give you a couple minutes to fill that out and we'll continue the conversation. All right, and also while you're filling that out, the polls are not our evidence of your needing to show that you're still paying attention um, in order to get CPE. For CPE, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be showing a number on the bottom of the screen and we're ready for the first number associated with this session. So if you're planning on collecting CPE, save this number, write it down or take a screenshot so that you'll be able to retrieve it later. Uh, we'll give you two more numbers during this session. Um, and then the poll question is completely separate from getting CPE, that's just for us, so we can continue our conversation. And while we're waiting for your responses on that poll question, why is it so hard for people to make a choice to go to some kind of a, a, a more modern system for something like mm. accounts payable? Mm -hmm. That's the way we've always done it, kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's true, but you know. It was last year, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, Gail, it's an interesting question, and uh, it's, a, it's a category of accounting that has been ignored for the longest period of time. Um, having been in the, the software business for more than 25 years now, uh, and, and, and accounting software, you know, core accounting or the add-ons, AP and payments and things like that. I've seen this evolve, and it's really, over 25 years, uh, we, we only just started automating AP 10 years ago. So there really weren't solutions. It was, uh, the keying of the invoices and then the, the paper moving down the, down the hall or being mailed to another location for approvals. And, and just 10 years ago it started. The biggest growth at that time was in the mid-market. I'm talking more in the, the, the businesses using automation tools because there were still somewhat uh, point solutions. Yeah. And they weren't really that approachable for the small business. And, and so now that we have that, those automation tools packaged and priced for SMBs and a low price option for accountants so they can work on many clients in an affordable way, it's starting to explode. And uh, there's some really interesting trends. And SMBs are what, Bob? Small, <laughs> small to medium sized yeah, businesses. Yeah, yeah. 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 more than so, so, yeah. yeah. SMB. <laughs> yeah, no, SMB. <laughs> small and medium businesses. Yeah, so, yeah. Which, is, which is a big thing. And I think we actually saw automation happen faster in that space. Mm -hmm. The small business market actually did some things before some of the mid market and bigger companies actually mm -hmm. figured it out. Huh? They had some yeah. really useful and approachable tools that we could apply. But That's I wanted great. to refer back for a second. And, and yeah, and I think it's really important important that we that we accountants know about what's available which is a big reason that our clients aren't changing because they don't know mm -hmm. and hopefully we're out there learning about what's available whether we do the service delivery ourselves or whether we just notify our clients that things are out there I mean there's a huge opportunity for us to participate with clients but even if we don't want to do that or we don't have the capacity to take that on we need to be informing our clients about what's possible and I don't mm -hmm. think we're always informed enough to do that and so we're providing a you know, a, a lower level of service than we should be. Mm -hmm. So it's time to rethink what we do and the questions that we ask again and where we look with clients. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to get lost in the mix, right? I yeah. mean, here we are, it's like, I got to close the books or I've got, oh my gosh, the return's due or my yeah. client really hires me to do tax prep. I, I, they're really exactly. here to ha pay me for tax advice. And so when you're getting into the spectrum of everything you could possibly share, yeah. where does AP fall on that spectrum? And that's, it's a challenge, right? I mean, there's so many things that we could help a client with, yeah. but it's just, it needs to be part of the conversation. I mean, how money moves is yeah, a little bit important in a business. I mean, I don't know. I've found that it'd be important. Yeah, and, <laughs> and what Gail mentioned at the, at the outset of this from my perspective, I'm, I, so what I, all that I do in our firm is advisory. I only do consulting with winery clients. So I'm out there with an owner who has hired me to help look at their operational systems. And she's sitting there at the table pounding her hands going, why can't I get the insights I need to run this business? Nobody can tell me what's going on. I don't have insights. 
And I'm asking the accountant, why, why is it taking so long for you to get the financial statements out? And the accountant says, because I'm waiting for the receipts. I'm waiting for the invoices to get approved. So they're running around the business trying to gather those signatures in a manual format. And then they're doing the same thing with expense reimbursement. And it's actually holding up the financial statement delivery because clearly if all the expenses aren't in, the numbers aren't right. And the accountants aren't giving anything to the owner until it's 100% correct. So, and I'm going, well, we can automate that. So, I mean, it's an easy win for me to say, well, that's a slam dunk. I can automate this and, and make the financial statement information happen faster. So, those are the kinds of things that if we don't get involved in the transactional aspects of the business, we don't know that there are opportunities for pain that we can help release for those clients. And so, it's a, a big opportunity and so, a big need for those clients. They don't know to ask us about those things either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Jeannie, what do you yeah. need to be asking your clients? clients to get so that you know how can you identify which ones have the problem the first thing I would start with is are you getting the insights you need to run your business and then are your operational systems supporting you in getting that information on a timely basis and once you start asking that those couple of questions you're now positioning yourself in a different light then Send me this info so I can get your tax returns done. Can you say those Very questions again? Because yeah. I know we're going to have people <laughs> well, I can't saying, remember you Are you questions? getting the insights you need to run your business? And are the operational systems in your business supporting you to do that? Okay. So, so that it's timely. Yeah. Well, I just want to, can you elaborate more on the insights? Because sometimes if yeah. someone asks me that, are you, I don't know if I'm getting the insights well, I need. So what, what does that well, mean? What is, do I need to know? This is the question. The, the question starts, the question that I ask is, what do you look to every day to know that your business is on track? And, you know, we accountants think it's, it's the financial statement, right? right? We're going into the accounting software to figure that out. If you ask an owner, it is never the accounting software. It's something like their point of sale system or their production system or their CRM solution or their bank account, in which case you can start having dialogue around that. But if they say it's the financial statements and I can't get that until, you know, six weeks later, then you say, what's holding it up? And you always find out it's somehow related to something going on in the AP side of the business or something else, but there's your opportunity to say, well, I can help you with that. Well, that strikes to mm -hmm. the core. What's the whole point of accounting? It Realist should be really, insights. It's, it's about providing information in a format that we can make decisions. I mean, Decision-making insights. Exactly. Yeah. We, we have, I teach classes on this stuff to business owners and in seminars and events yeah. where why do we have financial statements? Why do we have rules? And it's not for the accountant. No, it's, it's not the for the banker. We make the gap people happy, don't oh, we? Got, yeah, it's always gap. Yes, the small business owner cares about your allowance for doubtful accounts. Yeah. I mean, they really are really keyed in on that stuff. Yeah. But it's about making management decisions. It should be. And yeah. if something is holding up the business owner's ability to decide, do I move forward with this new initiative? Do I hold yeah. back? And, and then again, traditional small business CPA, how many of us are doing, or how many, us, not me, People that are doing books purely cash basis, and yeah. so now there's no matching. Yeah. So, oh, December was awful. December yeah. wasn't awful. You just messed around with depreciation that year. We want that to be a tool <laughs> for yeah. a client. Right? We've all seen it, right? Like, yeah. man, I lost $400,000 in December. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah. But the purpose of financials, this is why they exist, is so a manager can make a decision based on real empirical data. And then with that, you know, whether, what KPIs are important are the key, but we've got to understand that this is all a system. It's a little cycle of life, whether we want to sing Kakuna Matata or I don't know what it's going to be. But how do we... Please how don't do we, make us sing, Sean. You promised you were singing. No, yeah. not me. Yeah. Wait, and can we so. drill down on that just a little bit more? Yeah. So yeah. what kind of decisions are you not able to make because you don't have the data that you need from accounts payable? Well, the, you don't know your profit, you don't know your expenses, you don't know, I mean, during PPP, it was critical that we knew what our operating expenses were and what our payroll costs were. We had to jump in there before we had full insight as a result of COVID. And the timeliness of everything that was going on was absolutely critical down to the second. And if we've got invoices floating around the building and people run into sign it and all of that stuff, it's a problem. But, um, you know, the automation yeah. is there, it exists, and, and we've got to make it visible to people. It yeah. could. Oh, yeah. okay. now, Jeannie and, and Sean, I think you both have uh, really found this need with businesses and, and really tapped into it, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and you're, you're thinking about, you know, why? Getting, drilling into where the pain is. Yeah. And so it's, I can't get my books closed yeah. to, yeah, to see a question. picture of my financials. Yeah. It's also, though, there's also a ton of pain in terms of the time it takes. Yeah, the, the right? It's an inefficient process. It is prone to errors. It, it, it leads to conflict with vendors if it's not done right. 
well, inability just, to, to yeah. purchase things when you're, you know, you're, you're, you're damaging credit, things like and, that. And the relationship we want. I mean, how many people depend on their vendors in order to do business? I mean, if I don't get my, my grape payment in on time, I can't, you know, I can't do the wine that I'm going to produce. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, those of us that need alcohol can't get to it, y'all. That's a crisis <laughs> in my book. So it's important. Yeah. It's I important. think that's COVID a sign of Armageddon. Yeah. You can't get to that's it. Right. The alcohol ain't flowing. Yeah. The numbers aren't either. Um, but I, something you said um, triggered. Oh, so internal control. So Sean admitted before the show that he wanted to be an FBI dude. So, you know, <laughs> internal control stuff and, right. and, and having a workflow and approval systems in place. If they're doing manual approvals mm -hmm. and things, then you've got another problem to talk about. You want to talk about that, well, Mr. FBI guy? Po yeah, potential double payment. Okay, so yeah. I actually t I turned them down back in 2003. It's a whole different cooler. story. That's a, that's a big arm-waving speech thing that I do. Yeah. Um, but it's... It, <laughs> Every, think just every decision, right? And what internal controls do you have? How do you make yeah. sure a double check isn't happening? How do yeah. you really keep, have a process for validating that data? It's not just moving the money. It's not just accepting the receipts and making yeah. sure they get paid, but it's understanding everything. I mean, think about every possible insight you can gain from your financials. It could be, is somebody stealing from me? It could yeah. be, am I paying my vendor on time and now I'm paying premium costs because I'm paying late fees? Am I, am I applying my... 10W, uh, my, my discounts, right? Am I getting the opportunities by paying in a timely manner? You have so many yeah. strategies related to understanding the financials. And now, your clients may not understand them. This That's is where you get to come in. This is what we do for the advisor. Light moment for us. We yeah. get to educate them. Yeah. Here's what gross profit is. I mean, yeah. how many of you have taught your client what the balance sheet is? Not just how to interpret it. This yeah. is what this thing is. Yeah. You have so many opportunities to create value for your clients so that you can then coach them. And by the way, I, I think I said this yesterday's session, it's a revenue generating opportunity. So when you really get down to it, you want to help and add value. I, that's why I have a firm. I want to help people be more successful. That is the yeah. mission. However, yeah. mama likes to get paid. So uh, I want to make sure mama's happy. So revenue's got to come in so mama's happy. So it's keeping that working, but you deserve to get paid for this stuff. You deserve, and you have all this knowledge. I mean, I think of all the stuff we've accumulated over our careers. All we got to do is let it come out of our mouths and show up. And it could be, do you realize your AP stinks? And then create a solution. It could be anything. And, but without good data, you can't even make the decision in the first place. One of the mm. simple things we can do, especially for our clients that are on a cloud accounting solution like QuickBooks Online, is to look at the source of the payments. And if your clients are making all of their bill pays through their online banking solution, then you have a problem. Because online banking does not match those payments to the invoice. Mm -hmm. So they're making a payment over here in a system that is totally disconnected from their accounting application. And that's a, a sign that they need some help, that their controls are not in place. That's where you're going to end up with duplicate invoice payments yeah. and all kinds of garbage and crap mm -hmm. um, that you want to get in there and try to fix and help them figure out. And Right. And so s solutions, bill pay solutions, AP automation solutions, yeah, yeah workflow, uh, we, we, we look for those things, right? Or solutions available out in the market, look for that type of thing, a double payment. Ensure the payments are secure. Yeah, so protect that information. Let's talk about those low fast. tech, those low tech mm. clients of ours who don't have a scanner, who don't have a thing, who don't know how to get information to us in an electronic format, who realized the flaws in that system when COVID happened. What can we do to help get them to, to make this whole electronic thing happen? And mm. I want to jump in that there are two th two ways to look at that. One is can you help your clients automate themselves? Yeah. Or do you want to be the, the company that provides that service mm -hmm. to your right. clients? And we right. can do either. And yeah. either one adds tremendous value. And we yeah. still reset ourselves in their eyes as partners instead of the people who do the taxes or who do the gap financials that we don't care about. We become the people that actually help make the business better. It was great is you get to choose. You get to choose yeah. which one you want. I mean, this is yeah. your business. So you can decide, I want to offer this service or I want to refer this service. Yeah. You get to call on what this is going to be. You're not bound to either or. Heck, you can do both depending on what, how efficient it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and with, uh, with this growth we've seen over the last 10 years in this category, one of the exciting things is there are solutions that do all of these things. Yeah. And there's been a tremendous amount of investment in the market. Yeah. So the, the tech companies, the venture mm -hmm. firms plowing millions and mil billions of dollars into this category, literally. And, and so it's helping fuel this growth where there's pent up demand, there's pain. We've talked about some of those pains. There's, uh, and, and then there's now solutions to, me to, to meet that. So there's some trends I wanna share. 
So one is uh, trend, and, and Gail, if you can go to slide one. That'd slide be one great. on the screen. So then uh, we have, we see huge growth in just the last couple years, right? And so in the world of CAS or bookkeeping services, we're seeing this as the fastest growing practice area over the last a uh, couple of years. And by CAS, you mean? Yeah. Client accounting services, which generally is yeah, m more than an after the fact bookkeeping. Yeah. Right? So, so these are services that accounting firms are providing accounting to clients. Accounting firms, yeah. exactly. Accounting firms providing to clients, or yes. And, and so 20% year over year growth rate in these practices is amazing. This is some of the fastest growing uh, services you know, in, in, uh, in, in accounting, it, or it is the fastest. And, so when and that we got, compares we got to over something. Two year, and this was, these stats are from just before COVID started, right? Or the second, the right. 2020 yeah, 2018 is after was, the first yeah, year of Through COVID. 2018, right. And so now 2020, 2019 and 2020. Okay. So this is capturing the 2020 growth rate. Okay. Which was during. So almost double. Yeah, during yeah. COVID. So it's almost doubled. And you compare that to a service like tax which is growing at three or 4% a year historically, right? So it's tremendously high growth. There's a, tr a ton of opportunity, whether you choose to refer a solution or build a practice or expand your practice in this area. And, and it's becoming uh, more profitable as well. Yeah. So as the, as the accountants and firms are figuring it out, yeah, well, they're our, making, our making a return. The CPA firm where I work does not offer CAS services. And I started a bookkeeping business in 2014 in response to the calls that we kept getting as a mm -hmm. firm. People wanted quality bookkeeping that understood the wine industry. Mm -hmm. And so I founded a bookkeeping business in 2014. And the calls keep coming in. People need a, a higher level support with that part of the business. If I can't get the transactional stuff to flow correctly, then I can't get the stuff at the end of the year right either. And so they really are suffering. They're calling in, in, a, in, in advanced numbers. So that ab absolutely agrees with what you're seeing in the growth. Mm -hmm. well, there's there's some, a, a there's bigger some demand and more complexity at that level. There's some numbers that are pointing toward the great resignation is also feeding a greater need for this too. So right. people are not just not, quitting. I mean, we all have well, heard of the great are. resignation. They are kind of just <laughs> they're are. doing that too. But a lot of them are quitting and then saying, well, I can go turn that side hustle into my full-time gig. Well, yeah, when they turn right. that same thing into a full-time gig, we have this influx of brand new business owners yeah. that that don't know any of this and stuff. Right. And don't really want to know. They're happy to have, have someone to else do yeah. it. They really shouldn't have yeah. to. Yeah. We want them doing whatever that cool thing is that they know how to yeah, do. Yeah, they want to yeah. stream their video game and play. Yeah. And exactly. yeah, Which, by the way, right. is a legitimate business, guys. My son does I, that. I, uh, oh, no, yeah. I'm talking about legitimate make real money thing. So yeah, anybody Twitch. wants to poo-poo that. Twitch, ooh. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a <laughs> catch our breath and take yeah, a okay. quick break. Uh, we want to hear a word from our sponsor, Corpay One. When we come back, we will show you the second CPE code for this session, and then we will tell you the results of our poll, our first poll for this session, and then we'll jump back into this conversation. So we'll be back in just a moment. What's up, Molly? You know, paying client bills and saving money now that we don't have user fees for everything. <laughs> Thank you, Corpay One. Remember before? Why are you doing that? Those sure were different times. <laughs> Good news for accountants. There's no user, software, or scanning fees. It's CorePay wonderful. All right, we are back. And we're going to display the second CPE code for this session. So make note of this if you're planning on collecting CPE for this first session of day two of Ensuring Success 2021. And Alexandra, how did our poll results, results okay, come Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, this is not the results I expected at all. So the question was, how are most of your clients paying you? And 53% said that it's still a check in the mail. 32% uh, said electronically or ACH, 11% credit card, and 2% I wish they would pay me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. All right, and do we want to send another poll out before yeah, we? Yeah, I think this would be a good time. We have, we have a couple of other fun questions for this one. Um, so I think this one will just hang in with me for a second here. Uh, this is gonna be about, maybe this will help you kind of figure out which clients to target, but the question is, um, how much time do you believe that your clients are spending a week processing pay, uh, a accounts payroll, uh, 
Alexandra, um, accounts payable. <laughs> uh, first session of the day. Okay, so how much time do you believe your clients are spending a week processing AP? One to 10 hours, 11 to 50 hours, 50 plus, or I have no freaking clue. I got permission to put that in there. So, um, and maybe you have no freaking clue, and then we need to talk about how to figure that out. So, All right, excellent. Okay, so Sean, you were sharing a story with me at the break, so I think you need to jump oh. back into that. <laughs> so when, when I was making the comment about how um, Twitch streaming, video gaming stuff, yeah. us old fogies, now actually I was raised on Nintendo, so don't get me wrong, I mean I played more than my share of video games in my life. It doesn't make you an old fogey if you were raised on um, Nintendo. Um, okay. Just so. um, okay, you know what, actually, <laughs> it was Atari 2600, I was just trying to upstream. <laughs> Anyways. Um, these individuals that are streaming video games, I have a 17 year old that's gonna make half a million dollars next year. 17. Yeah. This is a real industry. And so now what I'm, there's a lot of angles this can go. When you have these young talent that's at your office that might be interested in, that's when you sick them on it. Go, go support that market. You know you're, those individuals will be excited about it. But it's fun to help these individuals out because again, what does a 17 year old know about accounting services and tax and entity selection and all the other stuff that goes with it? There, there's a lot of weird markets out there and I promise you, how she gets paid is probably pretty important to her too and, and there's a lot of automation already in it. They're welcome, they're already built into the automation efficiencies so offering solutions and ideas is exceptionally valuable to them. And she's got vendors to pay too. So she does have about how we can, a few, yeah, not that one many. One or two at 17. Yeah. Mom and dad are paying most of the vendors. Not anymore. <laughs> no, no, we have a whole different sugar mama in the house. Yeah. <laughs> it's a completely different thing. It's fantastic, it's wow. amazing. That is yeah. exciting. Yeah. But representative of the changes we're seeing in the market. Exactly. Yeah. So I just want to talk about this whole sort of um, not knowing the, the answer to the question of I don't really know. You know, I'm getting I know how I'm getting paid, but I don't know what they're struggling with. It really gets back to the shift we have to make as accountants that, that we think we have to fly in with the answers, right? I mean, that's how we were all raised as accountants. Um, except for cool people who aren't accountants like Bob. But, I mean, it was our training that we were supposed to have the rules to apply them and be the experts and have the answers yeah. and the tax code knowledge and all that stuff. And in order to shift to this mode, we have to be the people that ask different questions. And that's how we uncover the real needs for clients. And so it starts with what we were talking about before is, you know, asking them. But it's asking across the business, not just focusing on those financial metrics that we all learn to look at. The after-the-fact things like accounts payable days, What's your average on that? That's an indicator of something. If people are going too long with that, then there could be relationship challenges that we can address. But it's asking the questions beyond that. Okay, let's look at your processes that support the AP, which might be drivers to those accounts payable metrics that indicate a problem or a challenge. Yeah. So, and oh, it's so interesting. I had a conversation with somebody the other day talking about AP, and they were telling yeah. me, well, I'm, they can wait when I pay them. Yeah. Well, there's so many flaws uh -huh. in that, but just yeah, think but about very simply, could that person you're paying also be one of your clients? Exactly. You, you could actually it's be cross-marketing marketing and not even realize it. I mean, I have plenty of my vendors are my clients, and they, they came my yeah. clients because they were my vendor, and they yeah. saw what and we did, and they saw the value. So really, honestly, hey, you want more revenue, maybe pay your vendors on time, establish the relationship. So there's this, again, this is a cycle of how it all yeah. interrelates to one another that's extremely it, important. It really does, and we, I think we lose sight of that. It's another opportunity to market yourself differently based on how you pay and how you manage that. Yeah, yeah. so you, you know, you're, you're, we're seeing that that need exists. You've yeah. found ways to ask the question. We have yeah. data to show that represents the pain that some of these businesses are feeling. Yeah. And so uh, our parent company, Fleet Corps, we do an annual SMB survey. Uh, and so if we can show slide two, there's some interesting data that we can, we can share. So uh, we surveyed over 1,500 uh, small businesses here that some, some are our customers and some are, are most were not actually. And, uh, and we found that almost half view solutions to manage AP a high priority. So they're saying this is pain. They're saying I want, I need that. I need I help. Yeah. help. I need yes. help. So it's there, yeah. it's real. Yeah. And then when you think about what they want uh, to help manage things, they all, many also ask they want some type of employees holding a card to, to, to manage expenses. But it's a business-owned card, not a personal credit card that they then have Corporate to Corporate card usually yeah. is the, the, the tool now. On that one in a minute. Yeah. yeah. And I then, mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be, uh, that'll be good. And then there's also the, uh, 
uh, the fact that they want to see them all together in one solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's, right, we used to have sense. them separate, it, yes, and now they're saying, but why does it have to be separate? I want to see all my spend mm -hmm. in one place. I want to manage it centrally. I want to be able to see where my cash flow is. Mm -hmm. I want to know, uh, you know, Sean is talking about the big decision from the, from the financials. Am mm -hmm. I in the right cash position to buy that next truck or mm -hmm. open the office or buy the... Uh, the inventory I need to make that next wave of demand. So that's a really um, important yeah. point because I th think the apps are procreating like the tribbles from Star Trek. You know, they're just going everywhere. We got nine million apps, and we can't manage across all those apps. Yeah. So streamlining that stuff and bringing everything together mm -hmm. is a big plus for us and for our clients. Well, as efficiency, well. efficiency. I mean, that's why yeah. automation is so important. I mean, there's there's entire topics on this why her poll question about hours how much time do you gain back with some level of automation yeah. and the more you can bring either things into a single solution or get them to talk to each other i mean there's if you have two disparate pieces of software yeah. There's ways to make them talk with one another, whether you yeah. can build your own RPA, build your own bot, which is, I know, intimidating in its own right, but there's other interme intermittent tools that, like Zaps. Zapier, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Zaps Heather Satterley, yeah, if you're listening, hi. Um, yeah. she, but it's having yeah. those opportunities to be more efficient, save more time. We all know time is money, right? In our world, if you're still billing by the hour, I, I forgot what that was like, but <laughs> if you're billing by the hour, Every hour you save could be more valuable. And just because you became efficient, you shouldn't get punished for that. So there's got to be a way to make this all work together. And so it's saving time for you and your customers. And there's a concept we have a lot in our, in our office about delegate and elevate. This is the same thing as highest and best use of real estate, right? You don't put a little trailer park on the corner of a busy intersection. You want a gas station, a retail shop, a restaurant. Not you, where I come from, Sean. Well, all right. <laughs> well, South Bur Carolina, y'all. There's bourbon in there. That's a totally <laughs> yeah, different thing. Right. Um, so, but it's, it, you use that property to its highest and best use. You are this property. Your client is that property. How do they best use their time? And too many people look at the world of cost. Oh, it's going to cost me this much to do my bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it for free. And then they go sink 40 hours doing books that they just could pay, you know, 500 bucks a month for somebody to do. It's educating the client on efficiency and then your own efficiency. If you can peel four hours a week off of every uh, your time to do something else that's going to generate revenue, you win. But it's changing that mindset of cost and understanding that savings actually does translate to value. So mm -hmm. I just want to reiterate that. You want to eliminate that low value four hours yes, that you're billing for by the hour and replace it with high value billing by the project or by the result or by the value of what you deliver work in that same four hours. And that's the biggest question we get about trying to get people to do advisory. I don't have capacity. Well, if you look at what they're doing, they're doing low value transactional stuff that they're not automating. I and so they don't have use. time. You want the highest. Exactly. And we were talking about this. It's like, work. it's going yeah. back to our session the other day on yeah. AI. It's like, oh my God, no, they're going to take my job. It's like, yeah. they're going to take the crappy stuff that you don't want to do, do anyway. You and do you're going to enjoy the, the more value work, the things that you could charge more money for, That's et cetera. Right. And by the way, if you get, we're, you're giving a lot of plugs to our sessions later on. We have a cast session. We have a value, a yeah. pricing Person, session. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we'll get to, if you're interested in all that, come all together. It opens the door to everything. And it can. And, it can. And, and that's why it's great to pay attention. And, you, you know, you mentioned how highest and best use of real estate, yeah. right? So um, a, a, a business leader's time should be focused on their core business. The Oftentimes they yeah. don't want to delegate this. It's a trust issue. Or yeah, just, the money. It's just, yeah, it's money. Yeah. And so what are, they, what are they trading off? Family time. Especially yeah. in this world, That's right? Wrong. It's all with COVID and we're all yeah. at home. It's sort of, when does it stop? And well, uh, they're you know, also freeing themselves to travel. I had a business owner mm. in a winery who was traveling to, to Maui or someplace where she had a second residence because, you know, it's wine industry. Um, and her team was having to print a bunch of blank checks that she would take with her to sign the checks and yeah. mail them from, yeah. from the other location. And I looked at her and went, my God, no. And the approvals can be automated no. and, you know, all this other stuff we can do. And, and they're not taking advantage of that or we're mm -hmm. not telling them. Well, we're, we're uncovering where these weaknesses are. I mean, that's part of yeah. I, This is a yeah. positive that came out of the pandemic is that we started discovering things More. that we took for granted. We just that's didn't right. realize that, that those checks sitting on the desk while, they were, while you're working in the office, it's easy yeah. just to write the check and you don't think about it, but yeah. then you, it, it's revealing new weaknesses and just, yeah. and instead of going, yep, that stunk for two years and go back, yeah. 
see that thing stunk and that's probably still gonna stink. So let's just go ahead and fix it. Whatever that solution is, whatever that automation opportunity is and whatever that efficiency is, there's so much that we can do better. Let's keep moving forward. So the the survey point that talked about the expense cards and expense reimbursements. I mean, the, the fraud lights go off big time whenever we talk about that. Yeah. I mean, what have you seen? I've seen, we've seen so much fraud related to how expenses are managed and somebody's, everybody's given rights to the main card and nobody's reviewing and all of that stuff. It's a lot of do it's a lot of process and thinking through, right? I mean, how many how many guys are going to the gas station and getting their twelve yeah. pack of beer instead of just filling up the tank for the the car, or or they fill yeah. up all their buddies' trucks and say, I had a lot of jobs today. Yeah. It, you have to have a process by which to manage that. And if it's not technology, how in the world are you really going to know? I mean, 7-Eleven's receipt shows up and go, oh, pff, I think that was gas. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so CorePay can help with some of that. I'm assuming by getting the receipt. So how can it? Sure. You know, CorePay and other solutions too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we help, we help, yeah, scan all the documents yeah. and whether that's supporting receipt or a bill. So can we use phone? Pull to do it all the together. Phone image. Mobile apps, yeah. take pictures. You yeah. can capture all the information. And that's critical too, because again, scanners aren't sitting around with everybody in their truck. So phone app is critical. You know, looking things for like the same invoice being scanned twice, yeah. right? So we've, we've look out for duplicates, make sure yeah. you're not double paying. So yeah. uh, there's a, a fantastic amount of improved internal controls yeah. when you automate a solution, in particular one that brings together bill pay, expense reimbursement, and card. Because then cross. you see the entire spend in one place, yeah. synchronized into the accounting system, whether that's you know, QBO or Zero yeah, or, or whatever. say Gintech. Yeah, yeah. Or NAB or whatever. So right. you've, yeah. you've called uh, on a number of different points of you know being able to scan, being able to have some internal controls in a product, being able yeah. to tie into your accounting product. Yeah. We've had some questions from the audience. Can we get a checklist of if you're looking for an accounts payable product, mm. What are the key things that you want to make sure are included like in that product? Features and functionality. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, well, I think there's there's a few very big things to consider, and you know, one of those is is it well integrated to your accounting system? So that's really critical yeah, in this case. Yeah, you want the chart of accounts to show up. That was up. the first one I was thinking, like, yeah, because this is what we do. We need to make this easy and not just yeah. end up going, oh crud, here we go yeah. again. And mm -hmm. then we're building an error which we don't want. Yeah. Are you tracking classes or yeah. you know projects or ca what yeah. categories do you use? What lists need to be tracked to? The depth and the strength of that's really important. Yeah. Um, you know, does it do all the steps too? Yeah. Scan and capture. Yeah. Is there good approval workflow? Yeah, that's really and, important. And, and what's new is some of these approval workflow solutions enable you to automate other transactions. So let's say you want to capture a bill that's already been paid yeah. and you want to just get the data, code it, yeah. get it into the accounting system. Solutions today uh, have the ability to scan a receipt or a paid bill, move that into the system, and, and record it, it automatically. Yeah. Yes, flag it as paid, exactly. So it's not just for unpaid bills, it's for other things as well. So you we can save more that. time than yeah. you could before with simple, you know, this approval then goes to the next person and next, yeah. And a lot yeah. of this comes from like a session yesterday we had is know your client, right? You gotta know yeah. what your client actually cares about and that's gonna be a huge part of it is, mm -hmm. but in my case, a lot of it is, Mobile, 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 mobile. mobile if it doesn't have mobile, mobile capabilities, mobile the client's not going to like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, but understanding your client, if if they're 800 years old and they're still wanting to write a check and walk it to you, um, none of this is going to matter, right? <laughs> yeah. My own idea to rethink so, that client. So that's but, a super important point, Sean. Yeah. We, is it easy for the client to learn and use? That's can right. they can they use it? Can they look at it and start using it with yeah. no? coaching and those that do need handheld you know little hand holding yeah. can you show them in five minutes here's what you do yeah. oh okay I can do that it builds confidence then they'll use it yeah and that's very true and training them and training the rest of your teams if you have an organization that does mm -hmm. this so before we move on I think Gail we yeah. needed to take a second break. yeah we're gonna break for one more oh. quick message from our sponsor Corpay One and we will come back with the third CPE code for this session so we'll be right back CorePay One makes it so easy to set up advanced approval processes. Remember paying extra every time we added an approver? That was crazy town. Yeah, I miss you guys so much. Oh, I'm so tired. Don't forget about me. I'll be home soon, I promise. It'll be any time now. Daddy loves you. 
Things are better with Corpay One. Corpay One lets accountants customize their bill pay approval process. Nice. And improve workflow. It's Corpay Wonderful. Welcome back. Uh, we'd like to show you the third CPE code for this session, so be sure to write this down uh, if you're planning on collecting CPE for this session. We've had some questions coming in from the audience asking if our sessions are being recorded to be viewed later, and yes, if you keep an eye on insuringsuccess.com, it takes us about a week to get the recordings after the event is over, but then they'll be there forever. So um, you'll be able to see these again and share them with anyone who you feel would appreciate the insights in these sessions. So I think Alexandra has poll results we from do. our last poll. We do. Um, so uh, the question was, how much time do you believe your clients are spending a week processing AP? Uh, one to 10 hours, 55% of respondents said that. The second number, 26% said, I have no freaking clue. 16% uh, said 11 to 50 hours, and 2% said 50 plus. All right, so it sounds so, like there's an opportunity for the accountants of that 26% to get to a clue. Get a, help their clients yeah. get a clue. Yeah. And I'm yeah. wondering, is, is there a client that's too small to use an automated solution for accounts payable? I, don't I can't think, think of so. one. I think the smaller, the more benefit they have. The smaller ones benefit because you know, they don't have the internal. Yeah, the, they don't have a staff. Yeah. So if it's an owner, and I have a client that called me for bookkeeping help, and we didn't have capacity, we're trying to get more staff on our team. I set them up on automated systems, and they're doing it. The owner's doing it himself until we can get our team up to take on the full work. And it was a, you know, it's a slam dunk when I have an automated solution for AP. They can, they immediately switch that. This was an online bill pay. Mm -hmm person mm -hmm. and we moved them into an automated solution and they're happy and they're doing it and it's it's easy for them to figure out and to understand and so we look like a hero even though I'm not doing their work <laughs> yeah, well they have great. less time yeah they have I mean they have less they time have, they're wearing yeah. every single hat and so every time you can yeah. delegate and elevate get them to something of greater value and this is not just AP right think of yeah, everything, everything you can investigate for them to free their time up because they're probably losing their mind mm -hmm. um, well, and it's it's just a huge opportunity for value. One of the big opportunities, if you don't even go as far as doing the automation, is to document their current processes. And I'm doing a lot of that work right now because, again, wineries are complaining that Charge all this stuff that. is too hard. Charge for that. We did, yeah, <laughs> process, a process reviews project, and we just document it. And then we say, these are the things that, that are issues, these are where your gaps are. And then the next engagement is to help them fix it if they want you to do it. But the delivery of that document, here's what you're doing, mm -hmm. here's the flow, here's how the data is moving or not moving, is a big value for that client. And that's where we can get our foot in the door again, to just be the, the documenting people. Well, mm -hmm. I interjected on the charge for that is I was actually advising yeah. another CPA uh, a month or two ago, and they were like, oh, I was helping my client, and I was writing down how they did it so I could figure out how to give a solution. And they didn't charge. And they didn't charge. Oh. Because they thought that was part of the sales process to lead to an improvement process. Yeah, no, that actually is its own value, because process documentation leads to a procedure manual, which leads to efficiency, which leads which to scalability, leads to which leads to... Sets. And by the way, if you're in your world of valuation, if you have appropriately documented uh, processes for a business, the value of that business, when Those sold, up. can increase between 10 and 50%, depending on the type of business it is. So wow. value bill yeah. for that service, value price, not bill. Ed Klaus would kill me for saying value bill. <laughs> value price for that service. Yeah. Set the value price, not the how many hours it's going to take you. Yep. yep. And so, you, you know, this work. this uh, question, uh, Gail, back to the question of how small of a, of a yeah. company can you support? And yeah. um, what, what we've seen with the convergence of technologies, the value and the price equation has flipped. Right. Yeah. So historically, yeah. the, the software business would sell software and charge user fees. Yeah. Well, when we bring together card and payments and software, well, companies that are in, in tech, they can actually make money on the back end, moving the money. Right. There's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, earning. There's a lot of revenue there. And so we can reduce the cost on the Absolutely. front end of software, so you don't really pay user way. fees for every and you extra don't pay a subscription person. Right. fee and, and transaction fees, which can really add up. So it's one of the things you need to look at. And so with that change, we're seeing a real acceleration, uh, not in all segments now, even the very small. So one of one of uh, one of our firms has over a hundred clients. They just make two, three, five payments a month each of those yeah. clients. Lots yeah. of little small ones. Yeah. And then, of course, the very big ones. The, the, the pain's even deeper. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah, so that's it's a, a new a world. Big, it's a big exciting. plus is that smaller yeah. guys can afford to do this, too. Yeah. It's not a big, right. a big company-only kind of a solution. Mm -hmm. For sure. And do we have another quick poll we were going to do or not? 
Uh, well, we only have about three minutes left. We do. So. I don't know if you want to throw that up there uh, or not. I, actually, why don't you throw the poll up, and then uh, I want to have Bob just tell us a little bit about Corpe because we've had some people asking about that. Okay, so the this is maybe a loaded poll question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, um, do you believe that providing AP services to your clients would improve your bottom line? Yes, no, or I don't want more money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we talked about the features of an accounts payable <clears throat> solution. Um, and every solution's got, you know, probably majority of similar features, but there are also things that make one stand out from another. So, Bob, where does Corpe sit in the, the field of accounts payable solutions and what makes it particularly interesting? Mm. So, uh, so we support uh, both small businesses and accounting firms. So my team, we're there to support uh, you know, bookkeepers, you know, one, one person, you know, sole practitioners. Uh, up through large firms, and uh, and 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 that's a really an important point, right? Having the the team who understands your business, yeah. the support model that yeah. that you and your clients need, yeah, we right? Want. We recognize you're the front end of that relationship, so that's one big differentiator out of the gate. So designed with that in mind, with dashboards and tools to manage a bunch of clients, make that efficient. Um, another key in, in technology, uh, yeah, as I was talking about the price model, so we have a, 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 a super low price model, uh, nearly free. Uh, there's a couple things that you have to pay for, like void checks and you know, international wire transfers. Um, and, and so you can, you can afford to automate with any size client. It's simple to learn, simple to use, and then, uh, and then one of the biggest keys is a flexible workflow capability. We call it workflow. Really important. And workflow, because it's super flexible, it's essentially, at the simplest, simple approval process. Yeah. But you can use it to automate so many things, like uh, the, the receipt capture that needs to be put into the accounting system, or you can flag transactions that are risky or high dollar transactions need different attention. Um, you can scan for a new vendor and say, hey, make sure we get a, a W-9 for this vendor so that 1099s are easier at the end of the year. So we just package it all together and make it simple. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, How's with just a couple seconds left, 70% uh, say yes, they believe that it will help their bottom line. 23% said no, and 6% Say they don't not want no more money. Maybe they they got a teenager who's bringing yeah, in the five hundred thousand dollars. Gamers, I can still be adopted if you really that. have that much extra. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Well, this yeah, has been a great, great session. Thank you all so much. You. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Corpay One, for sponsoring this session. We are going to be back at the top of the hour with information you won't want to miss about the tax ramifications of various programs that came out during the whole COVID crisis. We'll see you then.